Hey everybody, thought I'd share my new Steam Launcher slash archive discs and how they work and how to make them with all of you today. So if you're interested in making your own physical PC games, this is how I do it. There's obviously any number of ways you could do something similar to this, but this is just my particular method. So let's go ahead and dive in. So for the first part of today's example, I'm going to be using Freedom Fighters. I uninstalled it just so you can see exactly what happens if you try to insert one of these launcher discs without the game installed. So just going to insert in the Freedom Fighters CD here. Alright, so now with that CD inserted, it's just going to take a second to register the CD in the drive, and it will auto-launch the Steam URL. And so if you have the game installed, it will launch it. If you do not have the game installed, it's going to ask you where you would like to install it in your predetermined Steam library folder. So you can install it from the internet if you want. And so that's how my launcher discs work. But for the Steam games that I started selling on my Etsy page that are game keys plus launchers, I started including an offline installer for those as well. So you can access those by just clicking on cancel here. Go up to the Steam thing up here, restore game backup, and then we will select that CD. And it will find the game and we could tell it to restore the backup. And then we could tell it where to install it and it will actually install that game right from the CD. And yes, I chose Freedom Fighters because it is a CD based game, so it's a lot smaller, so we don't have to wait as long for a backup to restore. So there we go, Freedom Fighters has now been reinstalled directly from a disc. So again, great way to give yourself an offline installer and bring back a bit of that physical feel to your PC gaming. Cause now if you insert the disc, it will launch that game right up. So you can use the disc to auto launch your games, bring back that physical feel or you could just continue using Steam like normal. It's all up to you, personal preference. But I mean, if you're interested in this project, you kind of want to bring back a physical feel to your gaming, I suspect. So yeah, absolutely love it. But fortunately, Freedom Fighters has a uh, silly little launcher that you have to go through. And I don't know why it showed up on the wrong screen, but there we go. Freedom Fighters is seriously one of my favorite games of all time. If you have not had a chance to play this game, definitely worth doing so. It's only $15 on Steam or GOG. I also have a couple of copies of it for sale for the same price on my Etsy page that include the physical discs. So, well, air quote physical discs. So, got a Steam version and a GOG version. So, shameless plug on my part. But anyway, again, if you haven't played this game, you really should. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about how you can actually create your own if you are interested. So now I'm going to show you exactly how I make these types of backup discs slash launchers. So first thing, we're going to choose a game. So we're going to start with Batman Arkham Asylum, Game of the Year edition. So we're going to, first off, create a desktop shortcut so we have something to launch it with. And now we're going to make a backup of the game install. So to do this, you just right click on it, properties and under installed files, you'll see backup game files option here. So we're gonna select that. And I'm going to choose my desktop for ease of use. And we're gonna tell it to create a backup. And so this is going to compress the game files into an archive that Steam can then reinstall them from. Obviously Steam has changed compression methods over the years. So do be aware if things happen to change, you might need to make a new disk down the line. And there we go, backup complete archive size, 7.25 gigabytes. So this will fit on a dual air DVD, no problem. I personally like to use the one disc method. So if the game was bigger than a dual air DVD, I would just put it on a Blu-ray disc and I've made backup archives up to 115 gigs on Blu-ray quad layer discs. So personal preference, if you wanna do that, just know if you are splitting between discs, you're gonna to have to manually copy all the files over yourself before trying to run the offline archive installer from Steam. Otherwise it'll just install what it has on the single disc and completely ignore the second disc and require you to download the rest from the internet. So personally, I like one disc, one game method, but uh, that's just me. But anyway, now that that's done, let's go ahead and make this into a launching 
ISO. So here we have the game URL that we created earlier. We're gonna need that, like I said. So first thing we're gonna do is just open up our backup folder here. So you can see it has all of the backed up files in a game compression format. So we're gonna add the URL in here and we're gonna abbreviate this just to make our lives easier. So uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, there we go. Bah. <laughs> Uh, so now we just need to create a bat file that will launch the game for us. So we're going to create a new text document, and I like to name them run.bat. That's just my thing. And I forgot to delete the extension here of .txt, so we need to make sure that this is actually showing up as a bat file. And if you can't see file extensions, you need to click on View, Show, and make sure that you have file name extensions showing. Otherwise, it will not make it into a bat file. But now we can just go ahead and edit this. And so we are going to type in at echo off first, and then we're just going to control it down a bit. We'll make this a bit bigger so you can see this. So start it off with at echo off, and then we're going to type in start space bah dot URL for Steam games. Then we're going to save it. And we can test it just by simply running the bat file. And if it loads up Batman, or whatever game you chose, congrats! You are now able to launch the game from that bat file. Now to launch it from a CD when you first put it in, we're just going to go ahead and create another text file. And this time we're going to name it autorun.inf and delete that .txt extension. And again, it'll get mad at you for changing it, but that's alright. Alright, now same deal here. We're going to right click on this, we're going to edit it. And this time, bigger first, we're going to type in square bracket auto run. Close the square bracket space. Now you could give the disk a label that will always be what is labeled here. If you so choose, but we'll name it Batman Arkham Asylum. Game of the year. Sure. And now we're going to tell it to open equals equals and we're going to type in run.bat that way it loads the bat file so auto runs have issues trying to launch a url in my experience that's why i make the bat file just to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible if you could get it to open your url files you can skip over that bat file entirely you could just put in open baa.url see if that works again it is very finicky for me i have no issues with bat files but Trying to launch uh, URLs directly from auto runs has, again, been iffy for me. So I prefer just to be safe. But we're going to go ahead and save that. And now we are going to open up Image Burn. If you don't have Image Burn, I will have a link to it in the description below for you. But we're going to create an image file from files and folders. So now this little button right here lets us select files. So we're going to go onto the desktop, go into the Batman Arkham Asylum backup folder or whatever game you are using for your backup. We're gonna select all the files inside that folder. So it'll look just like that. And then we will give the game a name. So here we go, Batman Arkham City, Arkham Asylum Game of the Year Edition. There we go. Uh, ISO, sure. Might put it inside my folder, that's fine. Huh, it didn't, cool. All right, but then under the disk label here, we could give it that same name as well if you chose not to give it a label in the auto run. There we go. And then under options, I've been using UDF revision 1.50 for compatibility. It has worked without a hitch for me thus far, so that is what I'm using but you can calculate the size of the disc and it will tell you exactly which one you'll need right here. So again, this is a dual layer DVD, so perfect. So we'll go ahead and build that ISO. And there it is, all finished up. So we could go ahead and test this. So Windows lets you auto mount ISOs just by double clicking them usually, but I have mine set to auto launch image burn right now. So you could test the disk using either Windows built-in ISO mounting feature, or if you have a separate ISO mounting program, you could just go ahead and load it up with that. So 
Gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So there it goes. It saw that it is Batman loaded it up perfectly. Up, oh, and I have two auto runs launching right now. That's great. Um, that's from my uh, auto run API. So there we go. Now we can just go ahead and launch the game since I already have it installed. But now that I have that ISO made and we've confirmed that it works, I'm just gonna go ahead and load up image burn and I'm gonna burn it to a disc. Yeah, 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 fine. All right, so this is a dual layer DVD. So just gonna grab one of those real quick. All right, now I just need to select the right drive here. There we go. So for the best possible burn, you wanna use the lowest speed possible. But of course you could choose whatever you want. So the slowest speed for my drive is 2.4, but for today's example, I'm gonna use 4X just to make it go a little faster and it shouldn't cause any issues with the burn. But I like to verify that everything is on these disks correctly. So I leave that checked, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell it to start. I don't want it to launch the game when it finishes burning it. So I'm gonna tell it to eject. Uh, so we will be back when this finishes. All right, so that disc burned and verified without any issue. So we could again, just insert it to verify that everything's working as intended. And there it is, perfect. So now just need to whip up some artwork and disc art, get it printed onto the disc and assemble the jewel case. And our end result is a nice custom physical edition of Batman Arkham Asylum Game of the Year edition. Really like how this one turned out. Really happy with how the disc turned out on this one. I love this. Uh, I love this. Sorry. I'm just going to geek out about it a bit. I love how this turned out so much. Just so, so good. And now just for a multi-game type of a disc backup. That is possible, you could do this in many different varieties. I decided to go with a simple bat file, just kind of similar to what I've already done, except this time it's gonna have a simple menu system. So for this example, I've backed up Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2, and again, I was just gonna do these on a single disc because they almost could have fit on just two dual layer DVDs. So Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 was fine, but Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2 spilled over into Blu-ray territory. So I decided just to put both on a single Blu-ray and it will work out just fine for me. So made the desktop shortcuts, shortened them here. And then we have the backup folders here. So for this one, I created a text file, renamed it run.bat, changed the extension. And so, this is where things get a bit different. You're gonna to have to make a menu system for this and I'll have a example linked in the description below. So again, gonna start with that echo off and then we're gonna make some headings. So one for the menu, one for Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and one for Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2 and then an exit subheading. So for the menu, we're gonna type in CLS and then we're going to type echo to display what we wanna show up on screen. So which game would you like to run? And then we're going to also type in echo and then put choice one, choice two, and choice three. So all this is on separate lines. And then we're going to set a variable named choice. And it's gonna ask us to enter the choice there. So you type in one, two, or three. And so if the choice is one, it goes to legacy collection one. If it's two, it goes to two. And if it's three, it exits out. So, a bit more complicated than the other run.bat we've shown, but but when you test it, you can see it comes up just like so. You can type in one, enter, there's Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1. Perfect. And if we run it again, type two. There's Mega Man Legacy X Collection Part 2. So for the sub <laughs> So to make the subheadings work again, if you uh, choose one, two, or three, it goes to the headings that match listed. And so for those subheadings, it's pretty much the same thing as our other run.bat. You just tell it to start that URL link to the game itself, and that's what makes it all work. So now I could just go ahead and create an image file from this source as well. So this time around, we're gonna to need to use the folder 
since I'm going to keep Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2's backup files separate. So we're just going to go to the desktop, choose Legacy Collection 1. And we're going to choose Legacy Collection 2. And now we're going to click on the files one. And we're going to put in the run.bat, Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1, Legacy Collection 2 shortcuts. And I forgot to make an auto run. How silly of me. So we're going to do that real quick. Auto run. Dot INF. Go ahead and edit that real quick. So at echo off label. Label equals Mega Man X legacy collection. And we're going to tell it to open equals run dot bat. There we go. And I almost forgot something really important here. We forgot to make this into an auto run header up here. So square bracket, auto run, close square bracket. And then do the label and open. There we go. Perfect. Now I'll just add that to the disk image as well. All right, so labels. You don't want to make one in the auto run. And again, I use UDF 1.5. And we'll see that this will fit nicely onto a single Blu-ray disc. Now we'll go ahead and create, go ahead and create that ISO file. All right, and so again, we can verify functionality by mounting this in Windows any way you'd like. And there we go, popped up exactly as I want. Select the game, and there we go. Perfect functionality for what I'm looking for here. Excellent, so now I could just go ahead and burn this one to a disc as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do so. And there we go, this one turned out just like that. So there you have it, my method of creating physical Steam games when there wasn't one to begin with. So I really love this project, I love what it has helped revive in PC gaming for me. And again, you can do this for games up to about 115 gigs on Blu-ray quad layer discs if you are so inclined. That's what I did here with Metal Gear Solid Delta. Yeah, I'm, uh, like I said, I love this. I love how this turned out. So again, if you are interested in making your own physical Steam game backups, I hope this process helps you out. And if you don't exactly want to make them on your own, I do have a few on sale on my Etsy shop and then also going to hopefully provide some archival services like this in the future, so stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for even spending a minute of time on this channel. Cannot do it without you guys. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you all back next video.